What is going on Cardano Nation? Welcome back to Dapp Central. I'm your host here for Reed and in today's video, as always, I want to break down some of the latest news and developments within the ecosystem. First things first, I want to break down a comparison of staking on Cardano versus Ethereum. Following that, I want to highlight the top traded NFTs over the course of the last seven days, as well as the top traded fungible tokens within the ecosystem. Now, following that, I want to highlight a brand new feature being adopted by the network from ViFi. This is going to be a non-custodial liquidity pool farming technique that they're going to be launching here very soon. Third, we're going to jump into updates here surrounding Sunday Swap and the fact that they've now released V2 or version 2 of their DEX protocol on the preview testnet. As a part of that update, I also want to walk through the actual UI or the user interface to kind of give you guys a brief look at what we can expect moving forward. Now, in closing of today's video, I want to talk about YAM4, which is going to be a DeFi lending and borrowing protocol being built on Cardano in the anticipation of their testnet launch on the network. As always, if you guys want to support me here on this channel to bring Cardano education to the masses, then consider delegating with the official Dapp Central stake pool. We just saw the first set of rewards for the month of March get released via Tosi Drop. And if you guys want more information about that or my giveaway, in which I'll be giving away the Meld and Gens tokens to delegators within the stake pool, then make sure to check out the two links that I'm going to be leaving down in the description below. Jumping into the first topic, I want to break down here a tweet that was just made by Charles Hoskinson surrounding Cardano versus Ethereum staking. So on the left hand side here, you guys are going to notice that we have a chart comparing the total number of delegators on uh, Cardano versus Ethereum. In terms of Cardano, we have more than 1.23 million delegators delegating their ADA to over 3000 stake pools on the network. Now, this drastically outweighs the total number of delegators that we have compared to Ethereum, which is lagging behind with only about 88,000 delegators staking their Ethereum. That said, that really goes to show how much of a forward thinking team the Cardano um, Foundation, IOG, and just the developers around the blockchain really were. Again, I think that they were able to identify that staking was going to be a key mechanism here when it comes to the crypto space, and they didn't really like how it was going to be done on Ethereum, and therefore they created Cardano as an alternate solution to that issue. So Charles's tweet reads here, Cardano is pretty special. It's almost like a lot of people thought about how to build an excellent staking protocol years ago and made it happen. Again, just kind of reiterating my point there as to the forward thinking teams and developers and leaders that we really have here in the space. So not to knock Ethereum here because they just uh, received staking. And we're actually going to be seeing an upgrade here, um, which will be taking place in this early summer or early spring, which will allow for them to unstake their Ethereum. Now, that said, on Cardano, we've always had this feature. You can quickly stake or unstake and move your delegation as you wish. And it's all done non-custodially, which means that your ADA never leaves your wallet. So again, here, really just breaking down a brief comparison of what we have in terms of staking between Cardano and Ethereum. Moving into the next topic, I want to break down the top traded NFTs here over the course of the last seven days. Coming in at number one, we have the Magic Kong's NFT collection, which just minted, I believe, this past Friday. So no more than three days old here. And they're raking in over the course of the last seven days over 531,000 ADA in terms of trading volume. Right behind them, we have another project here that has recently come on chain, making a lot of noise, which is going to be the Goofy Gophers Mining Club. Coming in at number three, we've got a pretty relative blue chip here in the ecosystem, which is going to be the Ape Society. They just recently had their Katas or Citizens of the Ape Society NFT sale, which also went very well. Now, right behind them, we have the EarthNode team or the EarthNode NFTs being released by the World Mobile team. Now, they're raking in over 200,000 ADA over the course of the last seven days. Now, earlier, we did see a trade for these Earth Nodes, which there's only 1,000 of, actually go for AD ADA. It looks like a user um, bought one of these NFTs for over 70,000 ADA, and then a few hours later sold it for only 80 ADA. 
Now, what we have seen on JPEG is that you can now basically make offers on NFTs and they may have mistaken the 80 ADA for 80,000, right? So they maybe thought that they were going to be making a quick 9,000 ADA profit by picking up the NFT at 71,000 ADA and then selling it right away for 80,000. However, the offer was just for that 80 ADA. And so they've lost more than 71,000 ADA as a part of that transaction. So Hopefully things like this are mitigated by platforms like jpeg.store and moving forward, maybe they can put in some kind of alert saying, hey, you know, you bought this um, NFT and, you know, you're selling or you're willing to accept an offer for, you know, less than 90% of the current floor price. So again, I think measures like this will be needed to not only protect um, the consumers on the platform, but to also kind of ward off the scammers that are putting in really, really low ball offers. And again, if you're not paying attention, you could potentially fall to these traps. Now, right behind them at number four, we've got Claymates or Clay Nation, I should say, raking in a little bit over 170,000 ADA, briefly followed by Chill Kongs, Cornucopius, Stag Alliance, Mallard Order, and the Board Ape Cardano Club. Moving right into the next topic, we've got the top performing tokens over the course of the last seven days. Coming in at number one, we've got C3, which is going to be an Oracle platform built on Cardano. Coming in at number two, we've got the Jiro token, which is going to be a wallet provider on the network. Coming in at number three, we've got the ADA token, which is going to be the native governance token on Cardano, briefly followed by a lot of hype and interest in Iagon, which is going to be an upcoming storage platform being built on the network. Right behind them, we've got the Dana token, followed by Vent, Occamfy, Cards, and ORN. Now, that is going to do it there for that brief update when it comes to the general Cardano development news. Next, I want to jump in to talk about ViFi, which is going to be a DeFi protocol being built on Cardano and a brand new feature, which is going to be non-custodial liquidity pool farming. Now, what I want to break down first is going to be how the current farming workflow works, and then we're going to break down the brand new proposed solution being developed by the ViFi team. So it states here in their tweet, we are very proud to announce the first non-custodial liquidity pool farming in crypto. This design is made possible by Cardano's extended UTXO model. So let me go ahead and just blow this up here and we're going to walk through this exact process. So if you guys are not familiar with providing liquidity, this is basically an opportunity to earn some passive income. While there are some risks, I do want to be careful about stating that there are risks involved in providing liquidity. Um, but this is a way for you to earn by providing liquidity to a decentralized exchange that then facilitates the trading of assets for other users using the liquidity that you provide to the DEX. And so understanding that here, what we have at the very bottom is going to be the current workflow. So right now, if you want to provide liquidity to a DEX, for example, like MinSwap or maybe even Sunday Swap, Wing Riders, whatever DEX being built on Cardano, you need to provide two tokens. So, for example, let's say that I want to go ahead and provide the Min token on the MinSwap DEX. I'll need to put up or I'll need to own the Min token as well as ADA. I can then deposit both of these tokens into a liquidity pool, which will require for me to generate a transaction. In return, I'm going to receive a liquidity pool token, which basically um, dictates the amount of the pool share that I own. And then from there, I can go ahead and approve that I use those tokens for actual liquidity pool farming. And so in order to do that, I had to deposit those tokens into a farm, which again generates an additional transaction. And then at that point, I'm actually farming. So there's going to be a total of three transactions included in the current process when you're going to go ahead and actually um, liquidity farm. Now, what ViFi is going to go ahead and provide with their brand new solution will be one transaction, which should make things a lot smoother moving forward. So again, you're going to start off with two tokens, for example, ADA and MIN or maybe ADA and ViFi. 
you can then deposit both of those assets directly in a liquidity pool, which will require a single transaction. And as soon as you receive the liquidity pool tokens, right, which dictate the amount of share that you own within that liquidity pool, those will instantly begin to earn you rewards. So as long as those LP tokens are in your wallet automatically without having to create any additional transactions or without having to deposit those tokens in another pool or another farm, you'll be able to earn right away. Now, this is going to be without the zap feature. And so let me quickly just break down what the zap feature is. If you're not familiar with zapping, this is going to be the process of only depositing a single token as opposed to starting off with two tokens that you're putting into liquidity pool. So in the first example that I just gave here, we're going to be putting up min and ADA or VIFI and ADA. With the zap feature, all you will need to do is provide a single token. So normally that's just providing ADA. And what the platform will do is automatically break that ADA down in half and actually purchase the min or the VIFI automatically for you in the same transaction that it's going to be going ahead and actually providing liquidity. So it's almost like a two in one there when you're using the zap feature. But again, once you zap, you'll receive the LP tokens dictating the amount of the pool share that you own. And then from there, once you hold those LP tokens in your wallet, you will be receiving the um, farming reward so a really cool feature here it is a little bit complicated but if you have provided liquidity before on a dex then this should be relatively easy to follow along and again it's going to be eliminating two transactions that you would normally have to make so shout out to this particular team here for what they're bringing to cardano and innovating and bringing a brand new feature which is going to be non-custodial liquidity pool farming to cardano in closing i do have to mention that they are currently live right now on the test net so if you guys want to play around with their decks as well as their bar or their revenue sharing feature then make sure to check them out using the link down in the description below moving into the next topic here for today's brief update i want to highlight the fact that sunday swap which is going to be one of the first amm dexes to officially launch on cardano will now be moving and upgrading to version number two so it reads here and we are live after months of hard work we're pleased to announce the v2 sunday swap user interface is now live on the test net if you guys are not aware there was just so much hype when the sunday swap decks launched it was again one of the very first amm style dexes that launched in january of 2022 since then they've worked to upgrade and make their platform much more professional and so if i jump over here onto their new version two preview test net um, you can actually go ahead and check this out for yourself so i'll go ahead and leave the link to this as well down in the description but upon entering the brand new user interface we're presented with our portfolio just like with any other portfolio you can see your portfolio balance you can see the rewards earned and you can also see the fees that you've earned as a part of that portfolio you can also check the um, historical data which right now there doesn't appear to be much going on right now but as this matures you'll be able to kind of track visually how your portfolio has been doing from here you can quickly see a breakdown of all the assets within your wallet or your portfolio and their price action as well as the allocation within the actual portfolio on the right hand side here we have our recent transactions we have the type of order the input the output and the time at which the order was actually executed now they're also going to be adapting or adopting excuse me a zap feature which i just broke down there for you guys as a part of that vi-fi update and so really cool to see that not only will you be able to zap now using the Wi-Fi Dex, you'll be able to zap on Sunday and you can already zap on MinSwap. You can also provide liquidity here very quickly by clicking on this option here. And what I want to do is just quickly walk through a process of making a buy to show you guys their updated UI. So I now selected to purchase a token. I can go ahead and select to buy Test Indie for the Indigo protocol. And I'm going to go ahead and actually enter the amount of test indie that I want to purchase. Let's just purchase 100. And I'm going to be paying with ADA. I can see the amount that I'm going to be spending, the expected output, and the minimum amount received after slippage is taken into account. I can also see my test amount of ADA listed here at the very bottom. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on purchase indie. And I'm going to go ahead and submit my order and enter my spending password. So let me quickly go ahead and do that. Try that again. 
there we go i get a nice little confirmation here and i should see the swap pop up here at the very bottom in terms of recent transactions and while that is going on here we do have a nice price chart again this was just launched no more than 30 minutes to an hour ago so there's not much historical data here but as this platform does grow um, we should see a much better um, price history here for this token now right below that i can see additional information whether or not the token is registered the token ticker the decimals whether it's divisible or not as well as the policy id as you guys can see there my swap is now listed and it's currently pending if i jump over into the orders page here it did change color so i do apologize there for that jump in brightness let me see if i can jump back there to dark mode i'm not sure why i did that but i can see that right now that last order has now been submitted it's currently pending and once it's executed it should fulfill and um, have two green bars here just like my prior orders which i did in testing the platform now in terms of liquidity if you want to go ahead and see the ex the existing liquidity pools you can quickly go ahead and do so by clicking on that liquidity pools option from here we've got ada indy ada berry ada ibtc and so forth if you want to add your own liquidity here you can go ahead and quickly do so by clicking on that plus icon there's also another method to do that so if i click on liquidity again here at the top I can also provide liquidity by using this option. And if I've already provided liquidity, I can withdraw it using this option here at the very bottom. One last thing to note here is that you can create your own liquidity pools for tokens that you may own or that may not already exist on the DEX by using this option here. And then from here, all you need to do is go ahead and select ADA and then whatever other token pair that you wanna use in terms of providing liquidity. If I jump back over into the orders page here, this order is still pending. But again, here, this was just a brief update surrounding this UI. Let me know what you guys think. This is a huge update here. We've been waiting for this for quite a while. A lot of people were wondering what exactly has the Sunday team been doing? And this is it. So congratulations to the team for what they're doing. And I also want to mention that they are also working on providing a on-chain governance platform here, which we should hopefully begin to see roll out over the course of the next few months. That is going to do it there for that particular update when it comes to Sunday Swap. As a part of the last bit of news here for today's Cardano scoop, I want to touch on YAM4. Now, YAM4 is going to be a platform for lending and borrowing of assets on Cardano that's going to be offering no liquidations on their protocol. So it says here there's been some slight adjustments to our timeline, but we're happy to announce that the YAM4 testnet will officially be launching on the 10th of April. And so if I jump over onto their website here, I did have Brandon, who's going to be one of the heads of the protocol, breaking down the actual project. So if you guys want to find out more about YAM4 and their zero interest payments with little to no liquidation risks and indefinite loan terms, then make sure to check out that interview. If you're interested in following them on their socials, you can also go ahead and do that by jumping into their Discord, Twitter, Medium, and GitHub. That is going to bring us to a close here for today's Cardano Scoop updates in which we talked about the Cardano versus ETH staking as well as the top traded NFTs and fungible tokens as well as the non-custodial LP farming being brought on by FiFi and then in closing we reviewed the new Sunday Swap V2 user interface as well as the upcoming YAM4 testnet. If you guys found any of this information to be helpful I would really appreciate it if you guys could tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the channel and you want more content just like this then consider subscribing and if you guys have any questions for me about any of the topics that we talked about today then make sure to leave a comment down below that said and as always i will see you guys in the next video Peace.